Um, good morning, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm really, really good. Um, what's it like taking a film like this on a kind of global promo tour? How does that feel? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm still, fe <laughs> I'm still feeling it. You yeah. know? Just woke up. <laughs> it's, it's early morning. No, it's exciting. It's, yeah? It's, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. I'm always curious how different cultures respond to um, stories, especially stories that, that pertain to us. Mm -hmm. uh, in that particular, uh, art, this particular um, uh, uh, part of history. How did um, Emancipation find you? Will Smith, actually, his company, uh, I think CAA sent it to, to Will, and then Will sent it to me. Mm -hmm. And then I read it, and me and Will jumped on the phone together, and both were like, we got to do this movie. And it was as simple as that? Pretty much. Well, you know, we talked it out. Right? Yeah. We talked it out. and. Our reasons why, both of us have our reasons why, it's very deeply personal. We knew mm -hmm. it was going to be a big responsibility, but yeah, it was close to that. Because I think there's the, um, there is a conversation um, when you have a film about this topic. Mm -hmm. For us, mm -hmm. how many more do we need? Mm -hmm. And my personal response is, I think until we have exercised our pain, mm -hmm. we're going to tell these stories for as long as possible. So I don't know, what's your relationship with having this conversation about sla stories about slavery and enslavement and mm. the pain it brings but also the resolve it could potentially bring yeah well I agree with you you know there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of um, denial that happens uh, especially in my country mm -hmm. in the United States uh, there's a lack of um, uh, accountability at times you know and uh, there's no real understanding when we see a, another black person shot down in the streets, why the response is even more painful, mm -hmm. uh, because it, it starts from a deeper, deeper place as well. So on top of that moment, George Floyd, there's 400 years of pain. And so uh, we have a responsibility to not forget yeah. what happened, right? And to remind and to educate uh, others what happened. So we can start having these conversations about how to uh, process in the healing. And, and that hasn't happened in a real way. Mm. And um, I don't think you can continue to run from that. And we, uh, 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 what is it, uh, 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 what's the saying? Um, not knowing is difficult. Knowing is even more painful. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Right? So sometimes we have a tendency to sort of run away from what hurts us uh, as black people, but we can't do that. Mm. And, our, and we can't allow uh, history to forget it so our children can know, right? Not to have hate in their heart, but just to understand uh, where we've come from, how far we've come, mm. and maybe navigate the future properly. Yeah. And also having these stories in our hands told by us, because mm. I think so many of the, the past stories haven't necessarily be, been and in our control yeah. and with our experience of feeding the narrative is mm. a different spin on it. Mm. So I'm also really grateful for creators like you that have the wherewithal to say, look, we need to tell this story and it's the story's in our, you know, in our control. So with you and we'll having that conversation, saying, mm. this has to happen. Right. Yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah. And also, uh, he had to save himself. Uh -huh to get back to his family. Right. And he had to go through hell to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it questions your faith, your love, right, your strength. Um, so it's a story about freedom, and freedom is not something that you can rely on someone else to give you. Mm -hmm. you sometimes you gotta just fight for it, you know, and you gotta go through hell to get it, yeah. right? Um, ultimately, it's for your loved ones. That's what it's about. Absolutely, and of course, um, Will is, beyond the Fresh Prince, of course. Right. But he is in our heart, collectively. Yeah. He's, he's the, fresh, the prince. Fresh, prince. fresh Prince. He's the Fresh Prince, he's going to be. That's right. Which is actually not a, not a horrible thing. Right. But um, in him, playing this character, yeah. what made him right? Though he brought the story to you, and it's, I guess, I don't know, I want to make assumptions that it's obvious that he brought the story, he's going to play the lead. Mm. But, okay, two things. If it was like, nah, I don't see you as that, right. how would that conversation have gone? Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah you know, he probably would have been really open to hear that. You okay. Know, Will Will's a pretty um, spiritual person. He's always open to discuss everything. And, mm -hmm. uh, he's an amazing person. And the thing about it, what you said about Fresh Prince, I'll tell you this. 
you're one hundred percent right about that. But when we did a test on Will's look, yeah, and the first time it came across my desk, his uh, his uh, makeup uh, and, and uh, hair guide put it together, Pierce and Judy, and I showed him the stuff I was interested in and what I wanted to do, and then Will had thoughts, and so when it came back across my desk, Mr. God's truth, it broke my heart. Yes, it, it brought tears to my eyes mm -hmm. because that's what the Will Smith we know would have probably looked like. Yeah, all that pain, all that in his eyes and everything is what Will Smith would have looked like. Mm -hmm. And it was a reminder that we all could have been born during that time. Yeah. And so the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air would have lived a horrible life. Yeah. Unimaginable. And that broke my heart and I said, Will's perfect. He's perfect for it because we have to remind people that that's what would have happened. That's, yeah, yes. Um, and I didn't, because I sometimes I want to go in heavy and have all the research done before I watch something. Sure. And other times I just want to go in right. unfiltered and without any kind of influence. So yeah. I didn't actually click that it was about Pete, the guy who was the, oh, from yeah, the picture, the scorch, right? The scorch back, yeah. So what was that like? I don't know. Mm, I don't know what my question is, but it's just I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. So in that, whenever, when he first saw that picture, mm -hmm. anyway... What were your initial thoughts? And then the fact that you had to bring that picture to life, humanize that person for us, mm -hmm. who's seen the picture and it's become co like pop culture almost. How, what, uh, what was the journey to doing that, to telling his authentic story as best you can? Yeah, well first, Bill Coolidge wrote a great script. Mm -hmm. And then I did my research with Bill and looked at, this. Uh, Peter had a diary, he didn't write it because he couldn't write it obviously then, but he dictated it when he went to the Union camp and he mm -hmm. told his story about the alligators, about the journey, about mm -hmm. the camp, everything. Uh, I got a letter from Captain Lyons' family when they found that I was going to do this movie, very concerned about how I was going to portray Captain Lyons. So, you know, there's a lot of truth in it. Um, for me, I did something with my visual effects guys because when I first saw the picture, I was horrified. Like, I mm -hmm. stared at it for hours. And then naturally, as a director, I started to travel, imagine flying over mountains and going through canyons and all these beautiful, you know, um, landscapes and then you pull back and you realize this is scars yes like that's how deep they were yes that's how ugly they were and then i read peter was in a coma for three months from that whipping and he wrote and he said to the guy that he found god he saw god or he met god you know during that time mm -hmm. and that his mind and his spirit was free his body was in bondage but they couldn't break him that's where that speech came from mm -hmm. and so that picture, when I looked at it, and he's like this, and he's hit, I, I stared at it, I said, he's very dignified. Yes. To be treated less than an animal, where did that come from? And so as I dug into him, I thought, this guy was a man of faith, right? And it doesn't matter if you call him God or whatever you want to call him. Obviously, that's what we call it in our movie. But whatever his faith was, his spiritual journey was, he was grounded in that. And so man couldn't do anything else to him. And so when I got the script with Will, we went through it and I just started, I said, we gotta take out every line that says he's afraid. Cause he's not afraid of man anymore. He's just trying to get to his family. Man has done everything they can do to him. They beat him, he said, threw him down a well, broke his body, broke his bones, but they didn't break him. They didn't break his spirit. They didn't break his faith, right? They couldn't break his love. And so for me and Will, that's what it was about. That's, that's what I dug into. Thank you. Uh, I, I love talking to the creators, the makers, because <laughs> I, as you're saying that, even the pullback, even the way the visuals are in this film, you feel the epicness. Just, yeah, it, it, I'm seeing it. But, and the sepia tone. There's a look. Mm. Um, I was like, this is a photograph. This is a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I appreciated it. I, this is a bit of a silly question, but were you ever tempted to do the Wizard of Oz color reveal? Because mm. there was a moment I was like, is it gonna happen? And mm. then I settled into, this is it. Yeah. But also when you talk about the beauty of the landscape that mm. you're filming, mm. but was it difficult to stick to the sepia? Or oh, no, it, not at all, because okay. there are a few different things that came about when I told Bob Richardson, my DP, uh, I wanted to be beautiful and, br and brutal. Mm. Part of that also was that most of these films are made from the slave owner's perspective. 
meaning a lot of times in Hollywood, they're not us to make. Yep. So there's golden light and the cotton fields and people are singing in the fields. If you were a slave, do you think the world would be that bright and beautiful awesome. to you? I don't think so. It'd be pretty bleak and ugly and hard and sharp. And imagine and we got sent to another planet, you and me, yeah. and we landed on that planet and we watched people being treated that way, treating each other like animals, whipping them, dragging them along, putting chains around their neck. It's alien. It's like another planet. Mm -hmm. And so part of that opening shot is like, what if you landed on another planet and this is how people were treated? You almost wouldn't believe it, mm -hmm. but it's true. You go to the museums, you look at history, it's a fact. So that's where a lot of that came from. I wanted it to feel almost alien to most people. Two questions before we end. Mm. You mentioned Captain Lyon's family, you mm. know, being concerned about how he would be portrayed. Mm. Um, how do you deal with that? Because... Well, first of all, it's not his story. Mm -hmm. So they can go tell the Captain Lyon story if they want to. Thank you. And he was a slave owner. So I don't have a lot of sympathy for him. Um, and he was executed on the porch that way. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just make the movie, you know, and I, again, it's not out of hate, I'm not, it's not out of revenge, it, it's really, truly, if this is a love letter, this would be my love letter, mm -hmm. this is our love letter, it's my love letter to us, we can't forget, mm -hmm. we, we can't forget, that's the bottom line, yeah. you know. Um, directing white actors in these roles, pulling out the, the best of the worst for them, what's that like, and secondly, what is the scene that most captures why this project, what this project means to you and mm -hmm. why it's important for us? It was overall. Do you know the interesting thing about the white actors? Mm -hmm. We had therapy on the set for everybody, okay. including myself, and we had, we had priests and spiritual people around. And the white actors really struggled. Mm -hmm. I mean, as black people, it was, it's so painful to do that every day, and as a director, like, I'm, it stays with me all night as I'm preparing for the next day, right? For the white actors, Ben Foster, Ben didn't want to do it at all. Okay. When I first spoke to Ben, he was like, it's disgusting, I don't want to do this character, I hate this person. He thought about it, you could talk to Ben about it, and then we talked a lot about it, and we wanted to make sure that it felt contemporary to today, which we're seeing a lot in America now. Uh, and then he decided to do it, and that speech, was a Bill wrote a great speech and then me and Ben talked about it and rewrote it to make it feel modern in a weird way. Mm -hmm. um, they struggled a lot and a few had to go see therapy afterwards. It was even my crew, the white actors, uh, white crew members that would come up to me. Uh, I remember one of my grips and gaffers had tears in his eyes, oh. but they were committed to making this movie. I mean, we went through hurricanes, heat, COVID, some of these guys lost their homes during the hurricane. Wow. They showed up the next day. And it was, a, it was a reinforcement for me because you feel depleted and hurt and you feel like, um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. And it was sometimes when, it, when me and Will both were in the swamps doing this, it would be Ben or be the other actors, the white actors that would come up to us, you know, and just be like, this is important, man. Like, they really were in pain about it, you know? So. It was a great experience overall to see that we're not alone. We're not alone. And um, we need everybody to collectively come together to make things happen, you know? It's not just us, yeah. but we do have to save ourselves. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. That's for sure. And it starts with us taking ownership of our past, taking ownership of who we are, knowing our history, study what slavery really was. Right? You know it was hateful, that's, that's a given. But the business of slavery, it can help you heal to understand. Sometimes money is people's gods, mm -hmm. and they do horrific things for money and power and wealth. And it's just, we need to know that. And the scene that is like, the scene for you that's like- For me? It's a really good question. I probably have to think a lot about it. No problem. I, I think I'd have to think a lot about it. But I think the scene that, that really is probably the most important scene for me is when John questions God. 
because that's an argument that we we have right amongst ourselves. How could if there was a God? How could God let that happen? But we're so embedded in our faith and in the church and all the things. It's it's a question that we have amongst ourselves. That's the argument. You know, we could talk because that <laughs> evoked a lot for me. But yeah, yes. I know, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> the argument. I've had that argument my whole life. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so much.